Okay, so again, we've got the uh, cluster. Uh, I started taking it apart. Um, what we are doing with this one is the customer's original, um, I took their original one apart already. Their RPM gauge was uh, getting stuck randomly up in higher RPM when they would be idling. So I'm um, assuming the motor was beginning to uh, act up and, and go bad. So my resolution is to get a secondhand cluster and then from there we can install it uh, hoping and assuming all these motors are going to be good and okay. Uh, the only issue is you cannot install on these BMWs a used one without having a VIN number and mileage discrepancy. So, so what I'm going to do is move over that EEPROM that holds the uh, information from the customer's original unit over to the used unit. And so this is the um, original board. The EEPROM has been removed. It's that guy there. And now I am in the process of taking this apart. The EEPROM lives on the, the back side of this front panel so you have to take that out it's not on the back that would have been too easy but you've got to lift off those the the needles and then the the fascia and the EEPROM is behind that And the next portion is this. these LCD screens. They get unclipped from the rear with those metal pins. And it's real important to keep them uh, where they are, how they are. Because if not, they won't line up with their displays correctly. And there is the EEPROM, that guy there. Now just to uh, reassure those legs are on the pad, I'm going to touch them with the solder and iron. Okay, so you just watched me install the basically LCD screens. Now, contrary to what you might think, this is almost as critical, if not more critical, of uh, installation than the needles. Uh, obviously, you want to install the needles back in the same position so that they're not off of the calibration. But what I've learned in the past 
um, and it's through this style of cluster that I learned uh, about a year ago, is that the way that LCD works, it's pretty crazy. So it's all about light travel. So in these, they're almost like pads. This, these here, the pink, uh, soft, they're, and they're soft like foam pads. But there's kind of like channels in there. And I call it, or refer, almost like tiger stripes. And so what I've learned is that each, you know, tiger stripe that travel inside, you can't see it on the camera. It's in that black portion. And also, it's in the glass. Um, let's see. If you don't line that up, if this... If this pad is not lined up correctly with the tiger stripes on the glass, then your display won't be correct. And if these pads come off, you'll have to line that up. So try to make sure these pads stay on the glass because they are all lined up um, with the correct stripes. All right, so got it all back together the correct way this time. Uh, you saw there was a couple boo-boos there. And um, last finishing touches are these rubber, uh, basically, uh, kind of covers. It'll help hold the glass in there. So there we go. And just to uh, show you this one, had about 105 or just above that um, on the mileage so let's go plug it in and make sure everything works all right so <laughs> as you can see I've uh, clearly goof something up so let's see if we can make something happen before I go ahead and take that cluster apart now one thing I've not told you guys um, about a year ago I learned to basically do EEPROM work on this customers uh, cluster the uh, display was acting up or something was failing with the cluster so um, I had gotten a couple from the junkyard and messed around uh, finally got one to work with her original uh, I believe um, EEPROM and so let's see let's see what we can find out um, another thing, uh, like I said, I was maybe getting that is I have removed that chip uh, a couple of times, um, including this time, and reinstalled it, and then the times before when I was messing around. So I don't know if I have caused something. And so, okay, this, so on these uh, older E chassis, they will go in like E46 and the uh, E83, the X3s. 
they will uh, throw this kind of an error when there is a basically VIN mismatch issue where the light module doesn't correspond with the cluster and so it asks you to pick which VIN number you want to use. So the reason why on this one it's popping up is because we have zero information in our cluster because something's going on with that EEPROM. Um, I was pretty sure that I set it down. Again, I uh, did the extra with the solder gun to get on the pads, but hopefully the chip itself isn't uh, messed up from multiple uh, on-offs, on-off, and heat cycles. So I'm simply just going to do auto-scan, see what's going on with the other uh, modules Tattletail. And uh, part of it is because I thought at last year when I was researching um, that there might be a possible like cluster restore with that error message. So uh, just messing around. Let's see if we make something happen or not. Okay, so I wanted to point out that... Uh, <laughs> Well, it stopped, it looked like. Uh, so the airbag light had been flashing. The cluster actually comes up in the diagnostic list. Let's go into the cluster. Cluster not supported. All right, so it's odd that it brings it up there, but you can't go into it. So let me see. Okay, so I've installed my maintainer. I've connected hardwired USB. My voltage is up. Reason why is I've gone into programming and coding. Um, I thought that I remember last year reading that possible uh, rectifying that issue is to code the cluster. So let's see. A cluster to okay. All right, voltage is good. So, no, damn, no luck. And so, um, just before going over to the car, uh, after making all those repairs, I can actually check it here on the bench uh, with my power supply in the back. I've got a harness where I've just tapped into power and ground. And so, I will power it up here. Let's see. Okay, so there we go. Uh, no longer do we have that... Uh, code error message and um, <clears throat> we are looks like uh, operating good so that that stack of resistors that uh, directly had lines going to the EEPROM was uh, you know obviously I blew them off but it directly affects the operation of the entire cluster because uh, if not you cannot uh, have any connection to the EEPROM now let's see I can double check the gauges here. I think it's that. Okay, there we go. Let's see. All right, so all of them seem to be working good. Uh, that will solve our problem, and we will go and take this over to the car. And we should be good to go.